What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is I, Randy, with RTS Mobile Gaming. We are playing Sea of Conquest, and happy Friday, folks. In today's video, we are about six days in, 21 hours away from completing Season 2 and starting Season 3. So, I decided it is a great time to do another trinket video. I previously did a video two weeks ago where I talked about my favorite three trinkets in Season 2. This is going to be a much longer, more in-depth video where I talk about all the best trinkets for your ships, where to put them, and why. Get excited. Here we go. Okay? So, uh, I'm just going to start off by going through the trinkets that I currently have equipped on my ships and explaining why they're there. And then I'm going to explain the alternatives that you could be putting in their place, okay? And then we'll take a look at overall trinkets from Season 2 and do a summary on that. So, this will be a slightly longer video than the three favorite trinkets. Uh, can't speak today. This will be a slightly longer video than the three trinkets. Get ready. On my flagship, I am using one golden rudder. This is all you need. You can use more than one golden rudder if you like. However, you are only going to be getting the same 20% armor bonus as you get on the first golden rudder. The first uh, of every type of trinket you equip on your ship, you will benefit from the bonus ability on whatever the strongest version of that trinket is. Okay, so the golden rudder here is not refined, but it is going to still give me every 10 seconds a three second period where I get 60 aggro and I take 7% reduced damage. That means I'm going to be taking a lot more basic attacks for those three seconds and reducing the damage that I take from them. Okay, so uh, Golden Rudder is going to be best in slot for the flagship. You definitely want to have at least one because this ability is really nice. Okay, it is aggro and damage mitigation mixed together. However, you don't need more than one Golden Rudder. The other trinkets that you can put on your flagship are going to be the Eagle Shield. This is a great trinket. It is actually better than the Golden Rudder in some ways because it has aggro. It has less aggro. It still has 20% armor when it's a purple max refined or a gold zero refined. Okay, uh, But the, the difference here is the Golden Rudder only gives your flagship bonus aggro every 10 seconds for a three second period. So the other seven seconds, you don't have the aggro bonus from that trinket. This Eagle Shield will give you armor and aggro all the time. So it's actually a really great idea to have one or two of these on your flagship so you have bonus aggro all the time, okay? Uh, this is complemented by another Golden Eagle Shield, which I have here, actually it's purple. Um, Currently, I'm using a second Eagle Shield because, again, I'm going to get the 20% armor bonus and another 40 aggro. So I'm getting a total of 80 static aggro. I'm getting 60% armor bonus from all three trinkets combined. And then I have Golden Rudder giving me every 10 seconds for a three-second period damage mitigation and another 60 aggro, okay? So... Alternative options, like I said, you could run another Golden Rudder on this ship just fine. Uh, you don't need to because, again, you're not going to benefit from this second ability. Only the first unique trinket ability, uh, it'll only trigger from one unique trinket on your ship at a time. Okay, uh, you can't run two of the same unique trinkets because their abilities will not uh, stack up. Okay, but alternatives to the Golden Rudder would actually be... The Elixir. The Elixir is a really great trinket to have on your flagship, especially if you decide to put a healer on your flagship because in Season 3 you get another healer hero. You end up with two supports and you're probably going to put one of them on your flagship. Even if you don't have a healer on your flagship, you still have a very high constitution trinket with great stats all around. You are not going to benefit from the healing bonus if you don't have a healer on your flagship. But what you will do is, in addition to giving your ship good constitution, you will be giving your ship the ability to restore rage to your fleet every three seconds. The fact that it has high constitution makes it a valuable contributor to your ship. You, ha you get to determine if you want that 20% armor or if you'd rather have this rage generation. Okay, um, That's really up to you, but this is an alternative option on the flagship. All right, Now... I sometimes see people running with a Sharky or some other damage hero on their flagship with a Spyglass or something like that. Please, do not. If you're running with multiple Constitution heroes on your flagship, focus on more tankiness because they are multipliers, okay? Constitution gets multiplied by HP, okay? 
armor reduces the amount of HP you lose. They all work together with great synergy. As soon as you start putting attack and things like that on a flagship, I start to get confused. What are you doing? All right, so let's uh, move on to the next ship. Those are the options for your flagship trinkets, okay? For the Warhammer, this is a great topic, okay? I love the Warhammer in Season 2. I ran with Cordelia for about 70% of the season. The last 30% of the season, I've had Kojo on here. Look at all my Warhammer videos and all my other videos for this season if you want to see a detailed breakdown of the build. Trinket-wise, Bones' trinket is probably the best trinket in the game available in Season 2. Not only does it give your ship an incredible amount of critical strike chance, it gives you, even at no refinement, a 200 rage restoration every time that ship kills a target. This is absolutely must have uh, if you want to run a meta cutthroat build, okay? In addition to the rage generation and the critical strike chance, when you do kill a target, you get bonus cutthroat damage for or five seconds. Very, very nice, okay? Uh, but the rage generation actually allows you to use this ship, uh, uh, sorry, to use this trinket on another ship if you'd like. I'm using this trinket on multiple ships. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So this is gonna be best in slot for bones because it gets crit rate and rage gen and damage bonus when you kill somebody, okay? But you could substitute that with just straight old fashioned attack, okay? And there really aren't a lot of options for straight attack trinkets in season two. You're gonna be looking at either a spyglass, okay? Uh, which has good attack on it, or you're gonna be looking at a tyrant's hand which has the same amount of attack. You can be using a purple tyrant's hand that has been refined six times and still have the same stats as a zero refined gold tyrant's hand, okay? So you actually don't have a benefit of upgrading from a purple to a gold. Obviously the stats are higher because it's, it's level 40 versus level 30, but you don't have uh, any benefit from upgrading from a purple to a gold trinket unless you're going to ascend it further. If I gave it another six stars, this thing would have, uh, I think, 36% total attack. So it can definitely go up there, either 30 or 36. Um, it can definitely go up there and be very, very powerful. So really, you're stuck between using a spyglass or a tyrant's hand, okay? So if you aren't going to use Bones' unique trinket, maybe you didn't have the gold conscious to get it, which is totally fine. Having pure attack is also really, really nice, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, if you are going to run the spyglass, I have the same uh, thing to say about that. The If you run more than one spyglass, the unique bonus will not stack, but you will still get the 18% attack, okay? So you don't have any benefit to running more than one spyglass, but it's not going to hurt you if you do. It's really whatever you have available. Okay, but purple, like I said, unless the spyglass is refined, it doesn't matter anyways, um, or the, uh, the the hook is refined, doesn't matter anyways. As long as you have one spyglass, you're generating this additional 6% attack, which is going to be nice. Um, so there you go. Okay. On to, uh, oh, one more thing. If you are running Cordelia on this ship, because like I said, I had Cordelia on this ship for a long, long time, you are going to want to run the elixir on her. Okay, uh, the elixir is going to be really, really great because it's going to give you healing for her and it is going to give you rage restoration. However, if you don't use the elixir and you don't have the elixir, maybe you just have the life funnel, this is also going to give you the healing bonus when it's uh, six, six refined. It's going to be the same healing bonus as your unrefined golden elixir of 21%. Hi, bunny. My bunny's licking my foot. Okay, so you can use either or, but obviously the elixir has the rage restoration every three seconds, which is really, really great. Okay, and that is going to be the cutthroat uh, Warhammer options for trinkets. Next let's, next, let's talk about the Fearless Princess. Okay, this is your strategic ship. Maybe you're using a blue ship instead of the Fearless Princess. It's really whatever you got available. Let's talk about the trinkets that are available in this build. Okay, Undying Oath is really great. Undying Oath is going to give you an incredible amount of damage. This is Griffin's unique trinket. This is the gold conch trinket. This thing is absolutely dynamite, okay? It is going to be best in slot because even with zero refinement, 
I'm going to get a total of 25% bonus strategic damage, okay, uh, over the course of the fight, plus an additional 18% static bonus strategic damage. So you end up with, uh, what is that, 18 plus 25 Oh God, 43, is that 43% bonus damage? It's a lot of bonus damage over the course of the fight. And if you start refining this, this bonus goes up to 50 and this goes up to 30 or 32. I don't know, let's go to the archive. I don't actually remember. It goes up to 36, <laughs> 36 and then 50% stacking. So you can get 86% bonus strategic damage with Griffin's Trinket. This trinket is actually probably best in the game uh, if you're going to go full whale status and max it out because 86% bonus damage for Griffin, that is disgusting, okay? However, here are some alternatives if you don't have this trinket, okay? You can use Bones' as trinket because Bones' as trinket will give you critical strike chance and it will restore rage when you kill somebody. There is nothing wrong with critical strike chance on a high damage hero like Griffin. You can also use your same two attack trinkets, the Spyglass or Tyrant's Hand, okay? And both of those trinkets, the Spyglass and the Tyrant's Hand, are going to apply to your other strategic heroes on the ship, if it's Boa and Molly. In this version of my build, I am testing a couple different stats with the damage bonus gear after my last tank video. I'm now testing something for the next video. Uh, so I have Molly in the, the bench with Cordelia in action. You can do this as well. This is actually an incredibly strong build for uh, team fights because you have decent amount of sustain. Griffin still does incredible damage by himself. He doesn't need Molly to boost his damage. Uh, I mean, Griffin and Boa combined because there's a lot of strategic damage instances to trigger his specialties. Okay, uh, and they're a great pair. Cordelia fits in nice. Okay. So if you don't use Boa and Molly with the Spyglass or the Hooks, you, of course, can have Cordelia uh, with the Elixir, okay? Into the Stormbringer. This is my favorite ship. It also coincidentally has the most options for trinkets here in Season 2 because you have two Season 2 unique heroes in this particular build on the Stormbringer. Okay, and they both have their own unique trinkets, plus multiple other unique trinkets that all work for the build. So this is going to be a great topic, okay? You can see here I am running with Lester, and Lester is using a two refined Demise Proclamation Bones trinket, okay? Because I love getting 24% bonus critical strike rate, and guess what? I get this rage bonus whenever I kill a target. And in Season 2, if you've seen any of my videos, you know for a fact that the burning, drowning hybrid I'm showing you on the Stormbringer right now is the highest damage build available in the game in Season 2. There is no competition, okay? In an actual long, drawn-out, intense battle, your burning damage will out-damage everything else in this game, okay? So... There is nothing wrong with getting Rage Regeneration when your burning ship kills somebody because it is going to kill a lot of people, okay? If you don't want to run a crit build on this ship, that is totally fine. You don't have to, okay? There's a lot of other options for Lester if you're not going to do that. What else could you run on Lester? Well, Chain Bombs is going to be another really, really great best-in-slot trinket that can go on Lester. It gives incredible blazing and drowning bonus damage, which is perfect for this hybrid ship. It gives you a chance to trigger immense damage when you deal damage to somebody. Uh, sorry, when you inflict burning and taking on water, okay? Every three seconds, you can trigger a great damage instance, okay? So this is an incredible trinket to have. You can also put on the Spyglass for Lester. You can also put on the Tyrant's Hand for Lester. All of these are going to be very valuable. Now, you may be asking yourself, Randy, which is better, a zero refined Spyglass or Tyrant's Hand or a zero refined bomb? Well, the answer to that is uh, damage bonus to a ship is slightly more valuable than attack percentage on a ship. And you get higher base damage bonus on an unrefined bomb 
than you do on an unrefined spyglass. 18% attack is nowhere near as valuable as 21% burning drowning damage. Therefore, unrefined, the bomb is going to be much, much better for you than the spyglass. Okay. I also happen to like it better fully refined uh, because it gives great percent damage and the damage proc is incredible. But you could use either or. It's really up to your personal preference because when the spyglass is fully refined, its bonuses are also really, really great. Let's go to the archive and take a look at the max refinement. You get a total of 30% bonus attack plus another 12% attack that's going to come in after 15 seconds for a total of 42% bonus attack from this trinket. 42% bonus attack compared to 30% damage plus a damage proc. They're going to be pretty close in overall effectiveness. The bombs will be a little bit better, but they're really not far apart in actual effectiveness in combat. So if you're going to max refine it, you could use either one, no problem. Even three refined, the spyglass is about pretty equal with the chain bombs at that point. But the chain bombs at unrefined is dramatically better than the <laughs> dramatically better than the spyglass. So please keep that in mind, okay? Uh, okay, so on to Tanaka and Adeline. These both have a few options. First off, the unique trinket for Tanaka is the best trinket uh, for him in Season 2. It gives incredible blazing damage to his ship, but most importantly, when he does damage and he applies burning after 15 burning stacks, he does a huge nuke to the enemy team that is almost as strong as his, as his rage skill to begin with. And as you already know from some of my other videos, if you have Tanaka at uh, if you have Tanaka at three star, you are dealing a total of 15 burning stacks against an enemy that has five ships when Tanaka does an ultimate. Therefore, every time he triggers an ultimate against an enemy with five ships who's level 31 or above, you will be triggering Tanaka's trinket as well. Uh, so his ultimates become incredibly strong when you hit them for a crap ton of damage, apply a crap ton of burning, and then hit them again with another mega nuke. The amount of damage that comes out of Tanaka with this trinket in Season 2 is absolutely astoundingly incredible. Okay, This is best in slot by a mile. However, you can also run bombs on Tanaka. Okay. Chain bombs on Tanaka are going to be great. Keep in mind if you're using bombs on Lester, okay, only one of the chain bombs special effect damage will be triggered, but they are still going to give you the blazing drowning damage percentage. You can also use the spyglass or the tyrant's hook, okay, hand hook, whatever, all right? On to Adeline. She is in a similar situation as Tanaka. She also has a unique trinket who is available here in Season 2. Her trinket is really amazing. I actually love her trinket. Her trinket is going to help her do more damage than her having bombs. Okay, Adeline with bombs does good damage. Adeline with her trinket does even better damage. Why am I using bombs? Because this build in Season 2 is not about Adeline's damage. This build in Season 2 is about maximizing Tanaka and Lester's damage output in their fight, and I'll show you why. I'll just pull up a report, one or two reports from a battle we did yesterday, just to show you, okay, this is against a bunch of uh, enemy level 26, 27, 33s, right, 31s. There's all kinds of people in here, okay, more 31s. This is the damage output of this build, okay. If I open up the Burning Drowning Hybrid Stormbringer, you are going to see here that Tanaka literally doubled Adeline's damage, okay? So if she was using her own unique trinket, she might have maybe hit 10 to 11 million damage in this fight. It's definitely more damage, but it would take Tanaka's damage down. He would not be getting the 30% bonus that he's now getting from having a blazing plus drowning bomb hybrid trinket on. Uh, only Adeline would be benefiting from her drowning trinket, okay? So, I would be taking Lester's damage down. I'd be taking Tanaka's damage down. Therefore, it is best for this hybrid build to run uh, <clears throat> Adeline when she happens to have 
either a chain of bombs on or an attack trinket on. That way she's benefiting the rest of the ship. The true damage dealers in this build are going to be the Lester Tanaka combo because Lester applies a ton of burning stacks, okay? And Tanaka applies a ton of burning stacks. Lester is applying somewhere between 6 to 12 burning stacks every time he does a rage ultimate. Tanaka's applying up to 15 burning stacks, so you could be triggering Tanaka's burning damage uh, bonus multiple times every 10 seconds, okay? Uh, so I highly recommend Chain of Bombs, best in slot for Adeline in Season 2 to support this particular build, okay? You could also, like I said, use the attack trinkets, right? Uh, but this is going to be the best, okay? <clears throat> and I apologize. We're at 20 minutes, and I've just been talking nonstop. If you're still with me, please post in the comments. 20, Randy. Post in the comments. 20, Randy. Let's see it. Let me see what you got. Okay, and finally, the last ship we're going to cover in this video. I've actually gotten a lot of flack for not covering this ship in a lot of videos. I've seen three or four comments in the past two days saying, why don't you cover this ship? Um, I usually don't cover Crimson Sentinel because it is not a dedicated artillery ship. I only talk about it uh, really as more of a bait ship in my overall theories and sometimes on live streams. But in Season 3, I will get a legendary ship for artillery, and then I'll talk about that a lot. However, in Seasons 1 and 2, there is no artillery ship, so you're stuck with using Crimson Sentinel or a blue ship to get by. Okay. However, we can talk about the trinkets. All right. So, uh, Ophelia's trinket is also one of the best trinkets in the game. It's really, really great. Okay. This means that when she triggers her ultimate and you deal damage to an enemy artillery ship, okay, uh, it is going to launch an additional basic attack. Now, the way to read this, okay, it says this effect can be triggered at most one times. That means you can only trigger one basic attack at a time, but you can actually trigger this for the entire five second duration of her vulnerability debuff on the enemy. So you could, in theory, trigger two or three basic attacks from your artillery ship in the duration that it takes for her vulnerability to drop off the enemy target, okay? So it's really, really powerful. It's really amazing. I really like this trinket for a lot of reasons because triggering two to three basic attacks within a five-second period uh, on your artillery ship is going to deal incredible damage is going to get all kinds of bonuses from Ophelia and Sharky and Key Lanting and cause you to just absolutely snowball very nicely, okay? Ophelia's Trinket's going to snowball nicely with Key Lanting because Key Lanting gives rage to her ship every couple basic attacks. It's going to snowball with Sharky because Sharky's going to give a ton of bonus damage. Uh, sorry, a ton of bonus damage every couple attacks, okay? And also... A basic attack has a chance to trigger another basic attack from Sharky's ultimate. So you may only trigger one basic attack from Ophelia's trinket per basic attack, but that can trigger more basic attacks from Sharky's abilities, okay? So it can snowball very nicely and trigger a ton of damage. This is going to be best in slot for Ophelia. However, I highly recognize that this, is, when it is not maximized, is actually not that strong of a trinket. Having an unrefined withered heart is not that strong. It is going to give you a 20% chance to trigger another basic attack over those five seconds, which means you're probably going to trigger one basic attack, potentially, but it's really not that great. You really want to refine this at least two or three times. Get your chance to trigger over 30%. Try and get yourself to triggering at least two basic attacks, <clears throat> you know, uh, statistically over those five second vulnerability period uh, to make it really, really great. I'd say if you can refine it two times, then definitely put it on Ophelia. Alternative options. You could, again, run the Critical Strike uh, trinket on Ophelia if you don't have her ultimate. This is a great trinket for any captain hero uh, for the reasons we've talked about. And again, nothing wrong with the Spyglass or the Tyrant's Hand, okay? For your other two artillery heroes, you're either gonna be run, uh, you're either gonna be running a spyglass or a tyrant's hand hook. That's it. It's not a lot of options. Just go for pure attack percentage. Um, you could, alternatively, this is one additional option that you, if you really want to do something funky with, 
you could run an aggro eagle shield on this ship. An aggro eagle shield would boost your armor up an incredible amount. You're already getting a ton of armor bonuses on this ship, especially when you have low HP. So having more armor multiplier on the ship is not a bad thing if you're using the Crimson Sentinel. It will drop your damage. So for that same report that I showed you earlier, I'll just open it back up and you can take a look at it. The artillery ship on the Crimson Sentinel, which is not an artillery ship, with a bait ship build, still dealt insane damage. Do you see how much damage this ship did? I don't have any gem bonuses for artillery. I'm running two cutthroat, two burning, and the non-bonused artillery did almost 16 million damage in this fight, okay? Uh, she also, right, Ophelia's damage doesn't all calculate under her because she's going to increase the damage of your entire fleet by generating a basic attack for your entire fleet every 8 to 10 seconds, okay? Um, but this ship is absolutely incredible. So I would say uh, there is nothing wrong with running a pure attack build. If you do happen to run with the Eagle Shield, you will be boosting the effectiveness of your bait ship capabilities, right? You'll have more armor. You'll have uh, some more constitution mixed in, which is something to think about. You do want to have low HP as a bait ship. So if you do run a high constitution trinket, Maybe you don't even bother leveling up the trinket very much. Maybe you just level it up to like 20 or something so you still have low stats. You don't uh, out, you know, out health pool your other ships. You can see I'm sitting at 4.3 million, whereas like, for example, my Warhammer is 4.8 million. My Stormbringer is 4.8 million. So I'm definitely keeping my bait ship low and uh, high armor so it's tanky, okay? So that is how this build works, folks. That is how all the trinkets work those are all the alternative trinket options this was much longer than the 15 to 18 minutes i initially thought it was going to be but i hope that this is going to really help you identify all the different trinkets for all the different ships and keep in mind if you don't have the gold trinkets that's okay because it is not difficult to get a few purples fully refined if you've spent you know, 80 to 100 conches this season just from getting free rewards, and you should probably get double that throughout the entire season. You should be able to fully refine and get at least, you know, six or seven trinkets to a six-star status, which makes them just as strong as a non-refined legendary, okay? So, in all of these, right, uh, if you don't have the chain bombs, you can use the Vulcan crossbow. All right, let's go to the archive. What does that look like maxed out? Let's take a look. It should be the same. 21% blazing and drowning damage, okay? The funnel, 21% healing, right? The shield, like I said, 20% aggro, uh, I mean 20% armor, 40 aggro. The hook, right, 18%. And even Tanaka's purple, even Tanaka's purple sword is still pretty decent at 24% bonus blazing damage. But what you're missing is... Tanaka's other bonus from his trinket, which is the big damage dealer, okay? So, again, any one of these purples is just fine, okay? We'll spend two minutes doing an honorable mention about the blue trinkets, because some of the blue trinkets aren't that bad, especially at max level. Uh, you can see here, Throwing Hand Axe. This is the only trinket in Season 2 that gives impact. This is something to consider, because the blue trinkets... With impact, uh, like I said, the only ones that are going to be impact. Impact is actually pretty important. Uh, you might start finding out towards the end of Season 2 as more and more folks watch my videos and start to put armor on their ships. You're going to find that you probably need a little impact. So whether you get it with gems or you mix an impact throwing hand axe in, you know, there are options. Swordbreaker. I don't understand why this is so bad, but this is... One of the worst trinkets in the game. It gives a maximum of 6% attack and armor. I'm just going to move on, okay? Uh, Two-handed spikes, a maximum of 6% attack and impact. This is also abysmal. I don't know why they give you 18% stats here and only 12% stats here. It drives me crazy, okay? Uh, can Chain Cannibal, giving you a 10% attack bonus. This is not bad 
either. So you do have options here, and then the healing at 12%. You do have options if you want to mix and match some blues in, because maybe that's what you have available. Maybe you're free to play, and you have one or two golds, maybe six or seven purples, and two or three blues to work with your ships. The blues are not bad if you can get them fully refined, okay? So that's the video, folks. Please like and subscribe. Randy here, RTS Mobile, heading out.